Welcome to the Rustic Garden. Today is April 9th. It was 80 degrees. Tomorrow's going to be 90 degrees. Basically, we went from freezing nights that kept most of my stuff indoors to now we're going to have three exceptionally hot days. This is a tour of my garden uh, in mid-April and it's going to be kind of long because I'm going to show you everything that's going on. But a lot of these vegetables you've seen in recent videos and I'm going to try and, and keep it interesting and useful. One of the things I want to show you first over here is my container gardens and these are overwintered greens. This is cilantro that overwintered here in Maryland Zone 7 and it's starting to come back. That is some lettuce I planted a couple weeks ago. This is, I believe, arugula, spinach, and those all overwintered, they're going to come back and they'll be something that I eat now while my seeds, you know, take hold and grow. I also am growing radishes that I'm going to do a video on in these flower boxes and they're just set up by making equal, equal spaced uh, finger holes and dropping in a radish seed. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. Over here is my herb garden and I wanted to show you some of the stuff that's growing over here. This is kohlrabi, which I had under these plastic cups and that worked really, really well and they're starting to establish. If you look closely enough, some of the leaves are being eaten by snails. I am putting out my iron phosphate, but this kohlrabi will establish and it'll be great in a couple of weeks. These are my beets, and these are the beets that actually grew um, leggy, and I did bury them deeper, and they were also under plastic cups because of the cold weather. And this is chicken wire that is one design of a couple that I'm going to show in other videos of how to keep rabbits out. Now this is, of course, um, just chicken wire laying on top of here, but rabbits don't like getting their feet on this kind of stuff. So this is good basic protection. This bed doesn't get bothered by rabbits a whole, a whole lot, so I use the chicken wire. Here are my greenhouses. Well, before I show you them, let me show you this. This is my garlic that I shot videos on that I planted back in September or October. Right down the middle are onions that I planted by seeds, did videos on that, and to the left are leeks. And these all overwinter too, and they're all coming in now. So this is one way to get spring vegetables in your garden is to plant them in the fall if you're lucky enough to be in a place that lasts, or lucky enough to be in a place where the winters are mild enough. These are my greenhouses. These are plants that are acclimated to the weather, and I've tied up the doors, so to speak, unzip them, because it's going to be 90 degrees tomorrow, and I'm just hoping a lot of my stuff doesn't burn out. Come around this way. These are radishes that are not radishes, but peas that aren't doing as well as I wanted. And basically, they grew great inside. These are transplants, but the weather was so cold that it was getting down to 25 degrees, 26 degrees, and they're just beat up. But they should last and be okay. Coming around over here. This is my spinach, some more peas, more arugula, some different lettuces. There's a red lettuce in there. And this spinach is pretty close to harvesting. And there's nothing better, obviously if you're watching this, you're a gardener, but nothing better than fresh picked vegetables. They just have a taste and sweetness that you don't find in grocery stores. Some of my tomatoes and peppers that are getting acclimated to the outdoors a couple hours towards the end of the day. And again, the greenhouse or the shelving greenhouse units. These are my blackberries that I just strung up a basic structure around them to keep them from falling over and getting in my way. All right, let's walk over here. And let's just start up at the top. These are um, onion, uh, the onion transplants that I made, a group of them. And they're all already in the garden. Um, I did a video on that. This is red Russian kale that overwintered too. I cut the stalks back really hard, but you can see that they overwinter here in zone seven and these leaves will come back. I'll be able to eat them. They're also flower and you can eat the flowers of the kales. Leeks from last year that overwintered nicely and they'll be ready. Some more garlic. In here are leek transplants that I put in. I showed you how to grow those. Some blood beets and different lettuces in there. And this is another cage structure that I built that needed to be a little more sturdy because the rabbits do visit this bed. And there's some beat up leeks and that's black kale stems there that aren't 
they're alive. I'm just not sure if leaves are going to come off of them. Some of my container garden. This is a new bed that I'm building out of wood that I uh, used to hold the bunk beds in my son's room. Over across here are some teepee trellises that I use. And these are my vegetables that I've put uh, down on, a, on this basic bench structure what I use to just kind of let them sit in the sun. But because it's going to be 90 and because they're still acclimating, I've put some of the plants that aren't fully acclimated underneath. They'll have shade the whole day. And then I built this structure out of some plastic, some tomato cages. And if you ever need tools in the garden, these clips are the best things going. And you can see in there my oregano, kales, tomatoes that are fully acclimated and plants that can hang out here. I just don't want them getting eight to ten hours of full hot sun tomorrow. They're just not ready for it. So they'll get some sun coming in on this side, but this will give it some protection. Some more beets, onions that went in, and one more bed left. These are my radishes. That was my owl that's ineffective in keeping the birds away. Some shard or chard radishes are coming up. And these radishes were planted at the same time as the ones over in the flower boxes. And the ones in the flower boxes are a little bit bigger. Bunching onions that overwintered. Potatoes in my potato bucket that I designed. And then coming over here, you can see my tripod for the video I just shot on planting the uh, flat of Italy onions. And you can see another cage structure I made out of chicken wire for my, um, I believe that's endive and red romaine or red rose of lettuce. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tour. I'm going to do a tour about once or twice a month just to show you what's going on in the garden. Oh, let me show you one more thing. There's debate on whether or not you should use treated or untreated lumber. This is untreated lumber because it's what I had, but I do use treated lumber that's treated with copper and I believe that is safe. And my copper treated lumber has lasted seven years, probably go 10 years before I have to be replaced. This is untreated wood. This was the bed that I just replaced. And after about three years, the wood does rot out. So if you use untreated wood, your beds are gonna end up looking like this. Um, and that's okay if that's your preference, but just realize you're gonna have to replace them about every three years, maybe four years. And again, I'm gonna do a tour about twice a month of the garden just to show you what's growing. If you enjoyed this video, please check out my blog at www.therustedgarden.blogspot.com and also check out my YouTube videos. I have about 150 of them. Thanks.